in here, we start with customer journey insight. That's the main gist of what I'm going to talk about. Or, as we also know it as, how ING Direct Australia discovered process mice. And even better for me personally, it was, how do it, did I realize my own dream? So, very quickly, who am I, so that you know who's talking to you and why I am talking to you. Um, I'm a data scientist at ING. I don't fit into your graph of uh, normal people who do this, so that's good, I guess. Um, the other question is, what is a data scientist? Might not be known to everybody. Basically, just read the bottom part, it's an awesome nerd. I do several things. My background is in computer science and in mathematics and statistics. I combine those things and I got into contact with process mining uh, during my master thesis at the Free University in Amsterdam. Further on, I'm a, a very big basketball enthusiast. I know there's some other tournament going on in Brazil in some random sport, but that's not of interest to me. It's basketball for me, but that's not why we're here. We're here uh, because I'm going to tell you a story. Now, um, to start off the story, in November of last year I was asked by ING, or asked, I got the permission from ING to go to Sydney, Australia. And I was going to go there as a champion in data analytics, which sounds wonderful, right? I mean, I get to be a champion in something. I mean, it's definitely not going to be basketball, so might as well be data analytics. Um, that's a very big dream and, you know, it sounds great, but, you know, we just want to handle a problem. At least that's what I want to do. Uh, so they came with me to me when I just got there with the following problem. What are our customers doing on the website before they call the contact center? A very basic question and obviously they had no research into this. Um, but it was on a very high level. Basically the Excel thing we just saw in, in Anne's previous presentation, that's what they were doing. It was manual work, it was a lot of effort and um, they had a BI team which could give you deep dive analysis into what was exactly going on. But the problem was that was working on a data warehouse, so they had to get the data, it took, you know, you need to ETL it, you need to make it perfect, blah, blah. six months later you might get an answer. I don't even know what I'm going to have for breakfast tomorrow, so let alone what I want to know in six months, right? So that's, there was a sort of disconnect between what the business user wanted and what could be delivered. Well, that's sort of the reason I came there, huh? champion data analytics. Um, and then my dream that I talked about. My dream was, in my only four or five months of work there, uh, to give back something to the business user that he could basically self-surface his own answers. You know, use his domain knowledge. Don't spread all or don't give me all the domain knowledge and have me figure out your answers. You know better than I do what you want to know. I can just do the stuff that's needed for you to be able to get your answers. Yeah? Okay. So, how did we do it? Since we're here at a process mining camp, you might have figured that it all started with blocks. Yeah? As you might have also figured, because this is website to call center, it contained two sets of logs, which was the web logs and contact center logs. They were, they, these were not in the same system. So it was not a SQL join saying, oh, join on these, and they're done. No. Sadly, that's not how the real book works, at least not in Australia. Um, so there was something that needed to be done before I you know, could get to the customer journey and to the insight that we wanted to do, or maybe even later, my dream of giving something back. Um, the next thing that I did was Hadoop. It was uh, somewhere in the upper right corner of very powerful, well it is. Very quickly, Hadoop basically just means you parallelize your compute power. If you need more compute power, you add a cluster, uh, you add a computer to your cluster and you get more compute power. Uh, so no longer are you limited to millions of logs, we're now talking about billions of logs because you can basically go through terabytes of data in relatively uh, low amount of time. Now, that's where I hit a snag. This part was, you know, I could do that, that was no problem. But then we came back to the part where I want to give something back to the user. And, um, you know, so I tried some things, Excel graphs, some R plots, but, you know, it wasn't really giving me that idea that I was giving them something that was giving their a complete picture. As I just said, you know, you want to give an export, explorative environment where basically they can unleash their domain knowledge and just see what's going on and deep dive where they want to deep dive. And I was, you know, I was struggling, how do I do this? And I was already several months in my stay in Australia there um, when I suddenly realized, well, 
this is sort of kind of a process. I mean, it's not a well-defined process as the bank put someone there and said, you know, this is the process. Now, it was a website, so you, nobody goes and says, and you need to click that next page. It's not a predefined, nice process, but it's a process nonetheless, especially in this case. We had a clear start, which is, you know, you log on to the website. In this case, we even had a clearly defined middle, which is you switch to the call center or you call. Uh, and we had hopefully a very nice ending where you cut, you hang up and you think, ah, that's the solution. That, so there was a process to be mined. Process mining. Um, the thing was, then I realized, having seen this go back during my thesis time, um, this could be the tool that I give back to the business user. I'm so glad this all fits straight into with your presentation. But um, I can give something back to the business user. And what that meant was, I do this part, I massage the log so that it fits into Disco, so maybe airlift makes me unnecessary, but hopefully not. Um, I could do this part, but the best part was, the business user could do this part. I no longer needed all of his domain knowledge and uh, you know, how exactly their website looked like and their, and their contact center and you know, who should I talk to, should I spend hours you know, discussing things and so, no. I just give this, I set this up on his laptop, I explain the meta process of process mining, and let him go do his thing. Ah, this worked. My dream. Um, you know, high level talks, let's get down back into you know, what we actually did. Um, like I said, those two logs weren't nicely formed, there wasn't a single join key on, on those two things. There was logic needed to get those things together, to actually make this useful for process mining. Uh, my bit, to be exact. Um, that logic was twofold. First, you want to know if you're just basically going to see um, everything that a client has done with you, as long as he's been a client, you're going to get a whole bunch of information, especially because this is a website and we're going down to click level. Um, so we first wanted to bucket that smaller. So we said six hours, we had done some high level Excel stats, and six hours seemed to be a good thing to bucket things together for one single customer be it website, be it contact center, whatever. But because we were investigating uh, call to web, uh, sorry, web to call, we wanted to make sure that whatever thing they did on the web was also related to what they called about. So that last bit of logic was there could be no more than 10 minutes between the last thing they did on the web and the first thing when they called, basically, when we picked up the phone. Um, so very clearly, the case ID, the first one, yes, it's the same. Client, yes, there is a web and a call, but there's more than 10 minutes between those things, so different cases. Bottom one, less than a minute in between. This is probably they did something on the web um, and they had a question about it and they called us. Okay? Okay. Um, practice talk, so, you know, the actual use case. Uh, we're going to do that twofold. First, we're going to look at it from your perspective and then the bank's perspective. Uh, let's say, you want to buy a car. Uh, you know, look at you, the dealership, great talk, great salesman. Uh, you know, I'll wait for a second. You go back home, you go to the website, and you see, oh, yeah, I really want that sunroof on that car as well because it's Australia. You want to get burned, you want a sunroof. But you see that if the sunroof is added to your total bill, you won't have enough limit on your account to be able to pay that right away. Uh, that's the problem. So what do you do? You go to the website, find you direct Australia, and see. What is my limit? Can I maybe change it? Uh, is there a way to do that? You can't really find it. Mm -hmm. You call. And of course, our nice contact center agents, they say, yes, of course we can help you because we want happy customers. Um, you get a car. Even better yet, you're a happy customer. Um, but what does this look like to the bank? Well, only thing we see is you log on to the website, you either check the limits page, or you try and make a payment and fail because it's outside of your limit, you call, that's the next thing, but we change the limit, and you make the payment. And this is not something that a bank would like. They don't want the incoming call part. They want you to be able to do that yourself, obviously, because it's cheaper if you do it yourself than we have to tell you how to do it. Um, even better yet, I brought an actual process map with me. It's a little bit vague, so I did put red circles around the bit that you do need to understand. But the cool thing about this is this was a live demo 
for me in front of the management board of Australia having to explain why was I here and what was the purpose of it, my champion being data analytics and so on. Um, basically, I got there and I was told there's a lady in the board, you need to present to her. She is atechnical, don't come with process mining, Hadoop and so on. She won't understand, it's not her job to understand, which is fine. No. Um, but you do need to present a clear story about this. So what I did, I basically what Anders did, I did a live demo, I put Disco on there with their data, and I said, let's take a look at limits. So what I did, as I said, we set the filter to limits. Uh, it's barely readable, but this is where the contact center changes the limit for somebody. And because we're working backwards, we're saying we want to know why they called doing this. We work backwards, so the filter was on the, the contact center bit. Uh, I explained to her, we know that this was in the contact center because this is where all calls start. This is how the logs say that's where the call started. Um, and I can show her, look, they're having problems with the limits because they're going to the limits page where it shows how much you can trash and so on. And she had met me for 15 minutes and she said, huh, maybe we should take a look at what our limits are on, the, on our accounts. She had met me 15 minutes ago. It's great. So what happened next? Excitement. What else? Where else can we do this process mining? If this is so powerful, what, what else can we do? Well, next question that they gave to me is, is it clear how our customers need to open an account online? ING Direct Australia is a, a direct bank. They have no branches. There is no way to open an account Apart from the website, you can call, they won't do it for you, it needs to be online. Um, the process looks like, I want to open an account, you click through some things on the website, there's a multi-stage process, and hopefully you're successful in the end. Now obviously we were interested in, how can we change the website that this always goes right, you know, 100%, we go, we go for the max. Um, but there's a difference between people being a little bit jittery saying, I don't want to open a bank account online, that's scary, I want, to, I want to call somebody, I want to hear a voice on the other side. Well, you're not going to do anything about that, that's human nature. You know, we can do all the process mining and all the optimization you want, you're not going to stop that. What you can, however, look at is, are they failing somewhere in this multi-page process, seeing that that's where it goes wrong all the time, fixing that and hopefully reducing the amount of calls. Now sadly I was there only for five months and they launched a new website while I was there so I do not have actual data like in the previous one to show to you. Um, but it did show them the power of process mining yet again. So, even more excited. Where else? I mean, the sky is the limit. I explained to them, it's a generic tool. You, as long as you can make a process out of it, you can put it in there with a little help from me or Airlift. Um, so they exploded with ideas. Oh, we'll use it there, 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 there. Um, the most powerful idea that I heard, and that I'm going to share with you now, was uh, the guys who were in charge of saying, what is the next thing we're going to do to optimize some of our channels, be it the website, the mobile device, whatever. They said, why don't we use this to make an informed decision on what to do next? And you think, yeah, but you're a bank, you're all about making money, you already do that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot of gut feeling, like, what do I know, domain knowledge comes into play, but it wasn't based on hard facts. Um, so what they said, we can use this and we can see where our customers are struggling. So maybe we see something, oh, that's a quick fix, that takes maybe two developers one day. Let's do that quickly because we see that's 10% of our calls. Or maybe you see, wow, 90% of our customers are struggling with this. Yes, it will be a very big project to fix it, but it's 90% of our customers. We should do it right away. Now they had a whole bunch of other ideas and I'll be happy to share them with you if you ask me. The, oh, you know, I'm not sure how much time I have left, but we're almost there. Uh, so ask me. Um, as you can see, I left Sydney, sadly. Um, but what stayed behind? Um, they had insight into what to call on a click level, which had not been there before. This is the basis, that's why I got sent there, or that was the question. So at least I answered their question, that was good. Um, process finding with Disco, the reason I'm standing here was because we were in contact with Anne. Um, you know, they wanted to continue with this even after I left, so the extended evaluation and so on, that's going on between them. I'm not long, no longer involved in that part, actively at least. Um, but you know, again, we found someone who wants to do process finding. Good stuff. Um, I proved that you can get answers in weeks now maybe even days, 
you know, after the first time always takes a long time. You gather data, you need to figure out how it works and so on. Once you do that, you should be able to get answers in days, not six months. That's pretty powerful proof to me. But the best part for me was I realized my dream. I could give them a tool which empowered them to self-service their answers. I could put them behind Disco and say, well, this is how you roughly use it, or Anne tells them, that's fine with me too. Um, and I massage the logs with my powerful tools, and you go and look at it. You use your domain knowledge, I no longer need it, everybody's happy. That's it, thank you very much. Hadoop is written in Java, um, so you have access to all the Java parsers, all the uh, and so on to read in the logs. Uh, and basically, I wrote my own custom MapReduce job to make sure that the case ID was uh, applied to the right thing. So the logic I talked about that was basically written in Java and pushed out into uh, HDFS again, where you get it out of there. So, so you built a CSV file or something like this out of Hadoop. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the very last stage. Yeah, you get it out of HDFS again, and you need to massage it a little bit. But yeah, CSV file. Uh, but if you can connect to a server, you might not even be able to do that. So next, next filter, you know, straight into HDFS. <laughs> okay. no. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. 